Over the last few months, we've been posting Review Crew episodes recapping the Super Nintendo games that we missed before the series kicked off in 2021. The good news is that we finally finished the backlog, successfully covering every single Super NES game on the Nintendo Switch Online service. The bad news? Well, we still have a few dozen Nintendo Entertainment System games that need the Review Crew treatment. So today what we're going to do is dive back into those 8-bit classics, including games like Punch-Out, Nightshade, and Ghosts and Goblins. Sure, these games came out on Nintendo's online service years ago, but I still need to ask, are any of these games actually worth playing? To answer that question, I decided to flip through the pages of Electronic Gaming Monthly, Ace, Game Pro, and more classic magazines to see what the critics said back when these games first came out. So think twice about going on that date in the cemetery, because this is another monster-filled episode of Nintendo Switch Online Review Crew. Power! 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 Now, you are playing with power! Punch out by Nintendo. <laughs> 11 world-class contenders, take them down with your controller, beat them all, and you've got a shot at Tyson's title. But for that, you've got to beat Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. With or without Mike Tyson, Punch-Out! is one of Nintendo's most beloved 8-bit sports games. And for good reason, too, as you don't have to be a fan of boxing to get into this unique one-on-one -on -one fighter. Forget realism, this is more about memorizing the patterns of a wide variety of colorful characters and exploiting their weaknesses. Of course, the Nintendo Switch Online version no longer has Mike Tyson, for obvious reasons. But don't worry, because Mr. Dream is every bit as tough, and he has one of those perfect chins that you just want to punch. And when it comes to the reviews, the critics liked Punch-Out, with or without Mike Tyson. Let's go ahead and start with the lowest score, which comes to us from Computer and Video Games. Giving the game an 8 out of 10, they concluded that this Nintendo game is very playable. You have to analyze the opponent's movements whilst using some nifty footwork. Punch-Out! will not disappoint you, it's a truly enjoyable piece of software. In case you're wondering, the highest score came from Nintendo Magazine System, who went all the way up to a 94%. That's one of the highest scores they gave out that year, and not just on the NES. And then there's Ace, who may not have given Punch-Out! the highest score, but definitely gave it the biggest score. Using their ridiculous 1,000 point scale, Ace gave the game a score of 920. They said that it bashes the proverbial shit out of any other home boxing game on any other console or computer. Proof that even if Nintendo's hardware may be technologically naff, they can still squeeze an excellent game onto a cartridge. I detect no lies here. Ace is right, even on the 8-bit hardware, Punch-Out! still reigns supreme. This is a game that anybody can get into, even those of you who aren't all that into boxing. Check it out! A year before Beam Software developed the cyberpunk adventure game Shadowrun on the Super Nintendo, they first sharpened their teeth with Nightshade. Originally intended to be the first of a multi-part series, Nightshade is an intriguing mix of crime noir, superhero fiction, and even a little point-and-click adventuring. Looking back on it now, you can see that the developer was pushing the medium and trying to do things on the Nintendo Entertainment System that had never been done before. In that sense, Nightshade was way ahead of its time. But did all of these elements come together to make a great game? Well, if you ask Electronic Gaming Monthly, you'll find that the answer is a resounding no. And also, yes? With half the critics going low and the other half going high, this was one of the magazine's most polarizing games. On one hand, you had Martin argue that this game has a few cool ideas and an original type of gameplay that makes it interesting. The control is poor and the graphics are only average for this type of game. The quest is kind of fun, but only the first time around. 
Ed, on the other hand, strongly disagreed. Now this game has style. It's a quest game that involves a fair amount of thinking. Lots of things to do, examine, and use. A well-rounded quest that has spots of brilliance, and some of the solutions are downright devious. Not a game for the shoot-anything-the-moves crowd. With such diverse takes, Nightshade averaged a disappointing 6 out of 10. Now, if we look at other magazines of the era, what we'll find is the consensus was more in line with what Ed said than what Martin said. Nintendo Power, for example, gave the game a score of 8 out of 10, praising its unique concept. That's perfectly in line with GamePro, who went with a 4 out of 5 and concluded that cool graphics and a fairly compelling mystery offset some pretty tinny tunes. Turn them off! Nightshade isn't as challenging as Shadowgate or Solstice, but it's a nice case for first-time action adventurers. Look, like I said, this game was ahead of its time. It's sad, there are some real dated elements here, and it's more compelling than it is satisfying. It won't be for everybody, but I still suggest that you check out Nightshade on the Switch. Power! 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 Now! You are playing with power! Sekai Yoshishita Dynamite Punch! Nippon Jolik! Mike Tyson's Punch Out! Power! Now! Tatsuya Dakaru no Sekai Ranka o Taoshi! Sekai Heavy Q Champion ni Challenge! Punch out from Nintendo. Tauska, Tausarem. When you think about the Nintendo Entertainment System, you might picture bright and colorful platformers. But let me tell you, the 8 bit era had a real dark side. You saw that in games like Zombie Nation, where a severed head terrorizes New York City, or with the far more successful Castlevania series, which featured the Belmont clan whipping a greatest hits collection of horror greats. One of my favorite scary games growing up was Ghosts and Goblins, a fast-paced title where Sir Arthur fights zombies and other monsters after his girlfriend is kidnapped while having a picnic at a cemetery. Questionable relationship choices aside, this is an incredibly hard game full of cool locations and even cooler bosses. But look, you didn't come to hear me gush about Ghosts and Goblins, because you're here to see what the critics said back in the 1980s. While there aren't a lot of reviews from 1986, I am happy to report that there's a big split between the few critics that covered this game. We'll get to the higher scores in a moment, but let's first explore the 55% the game got from Nintendo Magazine System. Sir Arthur was enjoying the canoodling company of his princess when suddenly an evil devil kidnapped her. So he's got to run along scrolling levels, dust and undead sprites in preparation for the final conflict. This conversion boasts limp graphics and sound. The response is dodgy and the gameplay frustrating. Leave this well alone. Now this negative take turns out to be a bit of an outlier, as the rest of the critics seem to like Ghosts and Goblins. For example, even though Ace Magazine didn't score their review, they ended up having a generally positive take on the game, disagreeing with most of the points that were brought up by Nintendo Magazine system. GamePro, on the other hand, used their brand new scoring system to give the NES Classic a 4 out of 5. Although the graphics may seem a little primitive, the playability and challenge of this game are just as tough as many current titles. Today's gamers may be a bit more familiar with the Genesis sequel, Ghouls and Ghosts, but this is one of the carts that started it all. A true pro classic. For what it's worth, the highest score comes from the games machine, who ended up giving it an 84% back in their 19th issue. The graphics are compact and a fairly accurate representation of the coin-op, each level gaining more and more detail leading up to a fiery and wonderfully powerful climax. The cute original sprites combined with the atmospheric music means that this is a good conversion. One small gripe, does the map screen have to appear and scroll every time you die? Look, while the map doesn't bother me, I agree with these reviews. This is a fun coin-op port, even if it's not arcade perfect. If you like Ghouls and Ghosts, you should definitely give Ghosts and Goblins a try. Wakaimura. 
お姫様が魔界の使者にさらわれたってよ助けるのは君だできるかなファミコンソフト魔界村カプコンから予約しなくちゃ Hey! Thanks for watching me break down these classic reviews. If you liked what you saw here, then you'll be happy to know that we post new episodes every time Nintendo adds old games to their online service. We have a whole playlist with hundreds of classic reviews, so give that a binge when you have some time. Now, here's the question I have for you What's your favorite Nintendo Entertainment System game on the Nintendo Switch Online? Oh man, you have a bunch of absolute classics to choose from, including many that we've already covered in the review crew. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back with more stuff. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.